Okay, so this one simple trick is really nice to know if you're trying to make motion graphics inside of DaVinci Resolve. It's something I came up with a little while ago, and since then, to be honest with you, I use it every single day. There's not a motion graphic that I make that I don't implement this little trick in. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm gonna show you why it's useful. I'm gonna show you what it accomplishes and how it saves you time. So let's just get right into it. I'm in DaVinci Resolve here and I have a blank fusion composition. This is just the default five second one, as you can see. But so I'm gonna lay out some things for you. I'm gonna make some just basic elements here. And uh, I wanna show you guys how there's one way to make them that you know works, uh, but takes a little bit more time to get exactly what you might want. And then there's a second way to make them that makes everything just flow and you could say animate just quite a bit better. So I have two different elements on screen here. I have a black rectangle and I have the text subscribe carried within that black rectangle. So now let's say I wanted to make the black rectangle pop up from the bottom of the screen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a transform node, uh, but I want subscribe to work with that also. Now there's multiple different ways to do that. Uh, you might think back to one of my old videos, how to parent layers to each other, or how to parent different assets to each other inside of Fusion. We're not gonna go that route here. There's a way that's even a little simpler than that. But to show you what not to do would be to set the transform here. So like, let's say on frame 20, I want my black rectangle to be here. Uh, I'll have it start down here. Now, when I play it at frame 20, it gets to where it needs to be. And now I'm like, oh, well, I need to make a, a, a transform node for my text as well. And at frame 20, I want that to be right there also. And I have to make sure that I get it absolutely right. Uh, and even then, that just doesn't look good, right? Because the text doesn't stay in the middle of the rectangle the entire time. There's a simple way to solve this problem. In my little node tree here, I'm going to get rid of my transform nodes. And in fact, I'm going to disconnect both assets from the flow line, move them over here to get some space. Uh, and delete both of these merge nodes. I'm gonna show you how to set up a little basic better multi-merge so that you can control all of these things at the same time, but still have them connected individually. Here's what you're gonna do. First things first, uh, you're gonna take a merge node connected to your flow line, just one, okay? From there, you're gonna take a regular transform node connected to that merge node. And then before the transform node, take a multi-merge node. Set it right here, connect it. now. We all know that when it comes to merge nodes, you can't see anything that's connected to them unless you have a background connected. So in this case, uh, I'm going to take a blank background node, connect it to my background input. This is the yellow input on the multi-merge, drag the alpha down, and now I'm free to start connecting things here. Now I'm gonna show you how it works and why it works and why it's beneficial. Here's my regular black rectangle that we had last time. I'm gonna connect that here. Here's my text, gonna connect it here. So now, the way I have this set up, I can access this transform node and move both of these things at the same time. You see, just because the order of my flow line is such that everything feeds into this multi-merge node, which feeds into this transform node, which feeds into the regular merge node, just connecting everything to my flow line. So because this transform node comes after the connection of everything else, Wherever I move this transform node is where everything else also moves. This is a really, really, really valuable thing to know and to understand when making motion graphics that have more than one element and a decent amount of motion as well. So when I first started using Fusion, uh, I knew I needed a way to be able to access this quickly just because you could go in here and just rebuild it node by node one at a time, but that starts to get tedious. So what you do uh, is you select this here, right click, go to macro, create macro, title it whatever you wanna title it, save as group, and then save it wherever you keep your macros. But once your macros are saved, and I have a video about this, by the way, it's actually in the, uh, the glitch text tutorial. I'll leave a link, I think it's on this side for you guys. On, on the screen, I think it's on this. I'll leave a link right here, the, the YouTube link. You can go check that out. There's a part about how to make macros in there if you don't know how to do that yet. But in terms of wherever you save your macros, save it here. Once you have it saved as an effect, you can actually add it to your toolbar here. So check this out. Check out what I did. I have this effect here. I call it uh, Emerge just because I'm Ethan, obviously. Emerge is already an existing word and I thought it just sounded kind of cool. So I put this no tree right here, right next to my existing merge. So when I take it and add it here, I get this and I can just ungroup and boom, there we go. I have my no tree just like that. And it comes stacked vertically just because I used to work 
on a uh, different flow line. I used to keep my flow line. I used to I used to work on my flow line like this. Uh, I've since changed how I like to do that. I go uh, top to bottom now. But um, regardless, it still works. And it's a really quick and simple way of adding everything to your flow line at once such that you can still control them individually. Just transform here. I'm on frame 20. I'm gonna bring this whole thing down and you'll notice how everything comes down with it. So now when I play, subscribe stays right in the middle of that black rectangle the entire time and everything is being controlled all at once. And if I wanted to move individual assets, let's say I wanna move my text over here to the left, it still stays that way. Really nice, really fast, saves you a ton of time, allows you so much more control when it comes to working with nodes just because everything is a visual flow line and just the order of operations applies. It's a great thing to be aware of. It's a great preset to have made and I really hope that you learned something from this tutorial.